roster for Charleston. Have you talked to the players yet about who's going to be going over there? We've we've talked to most of them. I mean, I would say that the guys you saw in the field today are all good to go. So uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get the list out. Two pieces of games down the books. What are some of the conclusions you've gotten from those games? Uh, well, the conclusion was always, you know, for that phase of preseason was getting Dave the data he needed so that we could gauge their fitness level and then ramp up these two days, three days of training, figure out the minutes each player is going to play in the four games we have in Charleston and, you know, just gathering information. Something Other, there's other roles. I mean, look, we played Eric Freeberg as a number 10, which was not his true position. But in certain moments, it worked for us. So we always like to keep an open mind. He's a good soccer player. He's a smart soccer player. So wherever we can fit him in or wherever the team needs are, I think he's a team player, and that'll, that'll help me. Is there anything in particular about his game that you really like or looking forward to utilizing? He's a good passer. He's got a good vision. He's a big guy. He's strong. Good physical presence. Um, you saw him doing a little extra work with Nico, and he's got a good engine. So plenty of, plenty of, plenty of good points. How much is that experience going to help you guys this year? Because we, you've let go of quite a few veterans. We have let go some veterans, yes. <clears throat> There's a void there, but like if you're looking at our starting 11 for March 4th, um, I mean, it's a pretty experienced group. Chad, Roman, Steph. Brad, Dempsey, I mean, you know, it, it, the list goes on. So it's pretty experienced, but it's nice to have that guy because we know that over the course of a long season, there will be injuries, there will be call-ups, there will be, you know, stuff that happens. So we'll need him. What kind of flexibility does it give you right now with, with a couple of guys working their way back? Well, if you're asking about Aussie, about Aussie yeah. yeah, he's good cover for Aussie. You know, good cover for Aussie. Uh, I think he's also played some center back in China. So if something happens there, there's a possibility, you know, any one of the three spots in the middle of the park he could play. Do you think there's anything to the notion that when you win MLS Cup, uh, you kind of become a team to beat and teams maybe elevate their game when they play you because they want to put up a good showing against the champs or anything like that? Well, I think that's a lot of it's human nature. Maybe it's unspoken. I think guys always, we're in a competitive business, so guys are always measuring themselves up against the best players or who they think are the best players or best teams. So I would agree with you in that sense. Uh, we've already started the messaging uh, about that, just about trying to you know, keep a little bit more possession, take some of the sting out of the games in case teams are really fired up to play us, that we'll you know, have a strategy or a tactic in place to you know, kind of turn the tables on that. During your limited off season, how much time did you spend trying to figure out how to manage players who have only, in some cases, a week off, or whether they join the national team camp, or for some guys a month off before coming back to training? Well, it, it, it all is a communication, good communication both ways. I mean, players always say, yeah, I'm ready to play, coach, I'm healthy, and you know, sometimes that's not always the case. They, they just want to play. So they have to be honest with us. We're honest with them. Again, we, we, have a, we have a really good sports science department and we monitor and measure. Uh, Bruce Arena with the national team actually sent us uh, fitness reports back to Dave. So I know that the national team and Dave were talking with the three national team guys. So we're, we're, we're on top of it. Taking that in consideration, depth becomes important. A lot of young players in this team, has any of them stood out throughout this preseason? Yeah, some of them have stood out because they're not here. Because Shea and, and Henry Wingo and Nana Sinkum, our draft choices, were in a rookie symposium. So they got a couple extra days off. So that's fresh in my mind. So when they show up tomorrow, they'll be working hard. But yeah, we got some good young players that are there. And, you know, again, we're, we're going to travel to your question, Jeff. We're going to travel with a couple more uh, academy kids to Charleston, uh, Sam and Jake Morris. So we'll, we'll get the young guys out there. We'll get them out there, see if they're up to it.
What's your messaging to the team, kind of the reverse of Ari's question in terms of repeating? Everybody's trying to, you got a bullseye on your back, but what about saying, let's try to win this thing again, but how do you do that on a one Work step smarter. at a time? Okay. Work smarter. And that's the that's the big message. we got to work smarter. So if teams do that, if they really take a lot of stock of, hey, let's beat the Sounders because they're the champs, I think some of that's just, again, it's a competitive league. But if teams do that, we have to just play a little smarter, work a little smarter, make sure that we're doing all of the small details that it requires to win in this league. Uh, in regards to that preparation, uh, this is the first time that I can remember that so many teams in the MLS, Dallas FC, New York FC, they have gone down to South America and played some big teams from uh, down there. Do you think that's valuable? And is that something that maybe Sounders would look for in the future? Well, we've done that. We did that in our first couple of years. And then we played a couple uh, teams from League AMX when we were in Champions League. So it all varies. I mean, each team wants to do different things. I know Vancouver went to Wales and they, they had a little bit of their preseason there. So each team's different. We happen to be blessed with really good weather here in Seattle, even in February, so we're happy to be here. Kristen Rodan continues to mature. What have you seen in this short offseason that he's back? Have you seen anything different yet? I know it's early, but in terms of It's his... early, but I love talking about the kid. I know you do. I know I mean, you do. That's, that's a layup. That's <laughs> a, a layup. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he's great. A little more maturity. Loves working with Gonzo again. Pineda so that is just an added bonus so he his eyes got bigger and his ears got bigger because Gonzo's now talking to him again so uh, it's great uh, I expect a lot of positive things uh, to keep emerging out of the kid because he's got the heart and determination he's got the physique the physical nature of our sport I mean again I look back to that 60 yard run he had in the final I mean he's capable of doing that he did that against uh, Colorado as well I mean, he's a great kid. With your first off season where you were the head coach, uh, you, what is your familiarity with Chris Henderson and having worked underneath Garth that uh, enabled kind of your scouting network and the needs to bring in? How, how did you establish that uh, higher relationship with him this off season? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. That's a good question. Higher relation. I've always had a good relationship with Chris and Garth and anybody. I hope I have a good relationship with you. Um, it's 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 kind of okay. I got to make different decisions now. I could give my input, and Zig would have to make the final call, or Zig and Garth and Chris, or whatever trifecta was making the final call. But it, it's just a little bit more decision making. It's a little more thinking for me. It's a little more information gathering from my staff. You know, from Jimmy, Gonzo, Tommy, and and Dave. So, it, 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 I don't think there's been any like massive jump. We're all we're all good people, and we all are dedicated to help this team win. So, I think it's been pretty easy. Speaking of Gonzo, what is it that he brings to the team? Uh, a lot. Tactical knowledge is very good. He has an idea how he wants our team to play out of the back. Um, he obviously has a lot of credibility with a lot of our players so he he brings a lot i'm very 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 pleased with with his uh coming to us